inexorable potency to turn malignant among the following is PVL, erythroplakia, lichen planus, leucoplakia. So we need to understand there is a beautiful uh, table with a malignant transformation potential. Okay, this uh, PVL was recently, uh, we cannot say it recently, it was recognized in 2005 by WHO as an unknown uh, etiology. It's an unknown etiology. It's a very, very rare uh, uh, variant of her oral uh, leukoplakia, which affects mainly women. Uh, clinical history does, does not include your alcohol or your tobacco consumption, but it's the most, most, most malignant most malignant uh, with diagnosis okay this pvl was first uh, introduced in the literature by hansen this name is very important they've been asking in two three exams to define a lesion characterized mainly by a multifocal presentation your presentation of the disease would be exophytic i'm telling you the presentation exophytic vericiform appearance that's why it's called verrucous proliferator verrucous resistant it is almost resistant to all the therapeutic approaches both surgical or non-surgical with high tendency to turn into a malignant state okay several diagnostic criteria have been uh, proposed over the years to help in a clinical diagnosis there were many authors first they told it is a rare variant of uh, erythroplakia then leukoplakia then uh, finally they concluded that it evolves from a simple keratosis to a lesions with increasing degree of dysplasia o ovc ovc is your oral uh, verrucous carcinoma and conventional oral squamous cell carcinoma right finally in 2018 villa villa et al he suggested that the following criteria need to be satisfied for a lesion to be classified as a PVL. First will be a white keratotic lesions. It should be white keratotic lesion that can be smooth, fissured. I'm just giving you very important points. Fissured, verrucous, erythematous with or without the presence of ulcerated areas with or without ulcerated areas ulcerated mucosa second criteria is uh, non contiguous multifocal lesions multifocal or even the unifocal lesions unifocal or multifocal lesions which is greater than 4 cm in a single site i am telling you it's greater than 4 cm in a single site or single site larger than 3 m 3 cm with involvement of the contiguous sites the third criteria will be lesions that expand or progress that is what again it's multifocal it should expand over a time expand over a time over time then fourth is your histopathology which in absence of dysplasia or carcinoma even if it is not carcinoma, it shows hyperkeratosis, keratosis, parakeratosis, atrophy, acanthosis with minimal or absent cytological atypia, okay, with or without the presence of lymphocytic band. So, the most recent guidelines of, uh, of management of PVL include constant follow up for every three to six months with biopsy over one month and it uh, this pvl belongs to oral potentially malignant disorder with the highest rate of neoplastic progression of around 81 percent okay 81 percent this is the highest most malignant uh so any patient who has come with verrucous or who has been diagnosed with PVL over the years, they underwent, they either, they should have come from a verrucous carcinoma or even a normal squamous cell carcinoma, we should always suspect this PVL before arriving at any of the conclusion. The take home message for this question would be, you have to 
definitely note the uh, malignant transformation of each lesion among that ethereal stands first then will be your uh, nicotine palatina palatinous in reverse smoker especially in coastal areas of andhra pradesh okay then your erythropoeia osf okay leukoplakia and all is somewhere very down okay then your erythroleukoplakia laryngeal keratosis so see uh, thin leukoplakia they have they've given plus or minus lichen planus is still questionable erosiform so coming back to your question inexorable potency to turn malignant among the following inexorable is without doubt it is pvl so the answer for this question is proliferative verrucous leukoplakia